Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome at the Passaporta Festival, and more particularly at this uh, encounter between what I think are two very uh, original and important young European writers, Ricardo Menendez Salmon and Arno Kamenich. Uh, I think, as we will see, that uh, the work of these two authors is um, in some ways very different not to say uh, completely opposite to each other. And um, <clears throat> the opposition, and that is one of the interesting things in the context of this festival, lies exactly in the, the, the way that Menendez Salmon and Kamenich deal with the problem of time, history and uh, society. So to put this differently and probably too simply, you could say that in the novels of uh, Ricardo, uh, the lives of the characters are heavily influenced, maybe even determined by historical events, while in the novels of uh, Arno, the historical event as such is almost absent, um, because the things that happen or that take place are have a very quotidian or, in a way, uh, ordinary uh, character. So um, we have indeed two radical viewpoints on the problem of now and then, the title of the festival. Uh, and I think that, as we all know, at the extreme end of the spectrum, opposites sometimes meet. Now, uh, before starting our conversation, uh, Ricardo and Arno will uh, read some parts from their work. And uh, before they start reading, I will take the liberty to present to you uh, the, the, uh, the portions of their work that has been translated into uh, Dutch. And coincidentally, uh, both of them have three novels uh, published in Dutch during, well, the ones by Arno were published last year, I think, in Dutch translation altogether. And the one by uh, Ricardo um, during the last six or five years. Um, the work by Ricardo is published by Wereldbibliotheek. It's, it's all, all the three novels are translated by Bart Peperkamp. In 2007, um, the, uh, the Scanding was published in English, The Violation or the Infraction, which is actually about um, a young German tailor who has to become a soldier during the Second World War and who is extremely traumatized by the atrocities uh, he has to witness. This is also the novel that uh, Ricardo will read a portion from um, immediately. Um, in 2008 was published uh, Collapse in Storten in Dutch about, uh, it takes place in a more contemporary uh, environment, a small city where a very cruel serial killer is active and somewhat, you could say, inspired by the activities of this serial killer. There are three young students that start to commit uh, acts of terrorism. And then in 2009 was published uh, The Corrector, The Corrector or The Proofreader uh, in English, um, a novel that sort of deals with many things, but also with the, the terrorist bombings uh, in Madrid in uh, March 2004. As you all know, uh, executed in train stations and uh, killing about 200 people. Um, we will talk about this later, but I think the, if, I, if I am correctly, the tr these three books by Ricardo are somewhat intended as a trilogy. Uh, the same goes for uh, the three books by Arno, um, but maybe much more so. Uh, they are published uh, all at the same time as a sort of uh, a collected trilogy uh, last year, translated by uh, Mick Swamborn and published by the Basic Bé. Uh, and there is also one short story or a fragment published of a more recent novel in Dutch uh, in the literary journal Tirade uh, at the end of last year. All the work of uh, Arno is published in Dutch by Mick Swamborn. Um, Arno will read uh, from Cezner, which is the, the first part of the uh, trilogy. Um, this first part deals with um, 
people living together in a sort of meadow located in the Alps, quite isolated and at a very high altitude in uh, Switzerland. In, um, so the novels were written, this one was written in, uh, not in Dutch, I think, but in... In, uh, in German and Romanic. In German and retro romanic yes. Yeah. Okay. And you will read from this yeah. book in uh, the original language, which was retro romanic uh, Both. Ah, both. Okay. <laughs> but the reading remains. Mm -hmm. Can I uh, tell something about that? Okay. So this is from 2009 originally. 2010 was published Behind the Station. And 2012, uh, the last one, um, last part of the trilogy. And here the story takes place, or the conversations of the characters take place inside of a cafe or a tavern called uh, Helvetia. <laughs> so uh, I would like to invite Ricardo to read from um, the Scanding uh, in Dutch. But Ricardo will read to us in the original language and on the screen you can see the English translation. Buenos dias, uh, good afternoon. I'm going to read the chapter 12 of the, of the novel. Uh, this novel is constructed in very, very short chapters. It's usually it's, it's my style of, of writing and say so. El hombre convive con su cuerpo, pero no lo conoce, al menos no de un modo exhaustivo. Un hombre y su cuerpo son realidades distintas. Seguramente eso es lo que permite comprender la esencia última del dolor, que no es otra que el desgarro que produce la indiferencia del cuerpo hacia uno mismo. Un dolor de muelas, obstinado y sordo a nuestro deseo, basta para advertir semejante drama. Y seguramente también eso es lo que permite a un ser humano conservar su nombre, su dignidad, aquello que más íntimamente posee, cuando su cuerpo en la enfermedad, la mutilación o la vejez ya no le pertenece. Para entender lo que es un hombre no basta con tomar nota de las partes que lo conforman. No basta con escribir Kurt Krübel es la suma de sus dos piernas, su sistema límbico, su intestino, su pituitaria y sus gónadas. Hay algo en el todo del hombre que se resiste a ser contemplado a través de la mera adición de partes que lo componen. Suponer que esas partes mantienen una vida independiente del hombre que las reúne implica algo más que una metáfora. En el sexo, cuando el cuerpo se impone y el hombre se ve desbordado por su propia materialidad, o en el esfuerzo físico extremo, cuando los pulmones no responden a la exigencia que de ellos se espera y, por ejemplo, un corredor se derrumba antes de alcanzar la meta, tal evidencia resulta incuestionable. De ese modo, el cuerpo lleva hasta cierto punto una vida independiente de la inteligencia que lo habita. Y por eso filósofos y escritores sin por ello apelar a instancias míticas o refugiarse en el oscurantismo de la religión, pueden seguir pronunciando palabras como alma o autoconciencia. Un hombre sin cuerpo puede saberse a sí mismo. Un hombre que ve su cuerpo desmembrarse, quemarse, empodrecerse, no por ello deja de ser hombre. No es menos obvio, sin embargo, que el cuerpo en la vida práctica es la frontera que se levanta entre cualquier hombre y sus iguales, o entre cualquier hombre y el lugar donde su tiempo transcurre, el mundo. Porque el hombre siente y conoce el mundo fundamentalmente a través de su cuerpo. Ante las agresiones del mundo, el cuerpo se protege. Un vacilo activa sus defensas. Un chaparrón eriza el vello en brazos, nuca y piernas. Un alimento envenenado afloja los esfínteres. Pero ¿y el horror? ¿Cómo reacciona el cuerpo de un hombre ante la presencia del horror? Grita, sí, y hace que el corazón bombee más sangre, sí, o por el contrario paraliza sus músculos para no ser agredido. El espectro de respuestas que el horror genera en el cuerpo es amplísimo. El cuerpo sorprende entonces por su plasticidad. Hay cuerpos que se atenazan y cuerpos que se liberan. Hay cuerpos que se arrastran y cuerpos que se elevan. Hay cuerpos que interrogan y cuerpos que responden. 
¿Pero puede un cuerpo dimitir de la realidad? ¿Puede un cuerpo ante la agresión del mundo, ante la fealdad del mundo, ante el horror del mundo, sustraerse a sus funciones, negarse a seguir siendo cuerpo, suspender sus razones, abdicar de ser lo que es, esto es, abdicar de ser una máquina sensible? ¿Puede un cuerpo decir, basta, no quiero ir más allá, esto es demasiado para mí? ¿Puede un cuerpo olvidarse de sí mismo? El 2 de enero de 1941, en la aldea de Mie, en la Bretaña francesa, no muy lejos del mar, a la vista de 91 civiles ardiendo en el holocausto de una iglesia de piedra, un cuerpo respondió a todas esas preguntas con un retundo sí. Aquel día, un hombre llamado Kurt Krivel perdió la sensibilidad. Thank you. Uh, Ricardo, maybe Arno can read now. I think you will read from the beginning from uh, Cesner or? No, I just, uh, do I need to? So, uh, hello. <laughs> I read uh, some some parts, five parts out of uh, Sidney. It takes takes place in the Alps, and uh, I read in Romanic. The book originally is written in German and Romanic, and uh, Romanic is a language who is spoken by fifty thousand people. So I grew up in this language and in German. Il sposo rompe in mincigirlo, Clausio si le hette, al secavano sulla soifra cagata, e vanno sulla spascire sotto, con gli uti gli urdi gli uallano, che il signor pendeva. Il procedo ce l'è un scolato, quel si ritorna, si sperchi fa sera. Il signor non capo tutti in zertiga, giel, smacca la zeunga col zring, sente me un il procedo a con il zetzen, in che mondo posto prende il zetzen la zeunga del zring, se del procedo, in quei roi in pirch, ciappel per le sorelle, se gli si dia sul pirch, che quel ciù le un pede d'aul, tira una voz le sorelle, se smacca la genuglia, e la scoscia sul pirch, perché il zetzen sa picco le zeunga il naso sul pirch, e smacca in il ring. Al pirch in fraus, cui la via in ciò che tu ne sei sopra di vos cels pos, che le tiene del il seon giù del nas. Tu rischi, che rischi sulle vie naturali, che vieni da bagaglia d'ora la primavera vergata, con l'urbi alz auto, se tenia nere davano a soffi spela hette tiben, i tiben e meren si vese il crescio sulla hette nuca il pastor, e del proceggia nel pastor, e fan senso ciò che non si svegno degli auto per arvo, la soi ve cresce in vinavon, ven minuti spitati, cresce in madem cincuna nevosa al gang rette ur, per cui che la via moina bubia più lunge, per cui che è buon plazza se mena per auto sgronza, e tenia nere davano a soi, che avevano ciò virt, che io subo spesserada per arvo, la soi, se il crescio, Ich soll heute der Paar sein als Fumels, er fand Ciao als Ausflüglers. Il preve nel centro mesi di lunge senza un mopede intorno alla curva e l'alza la pura la servia naturale la rassa sgulaccia del stiavo in scura in incontro al pre con elm e giappa anche il preva con suo mopede quasi su via giù e la scascia stiet il pre mette giù suo mopede per hetto se venga fei con venare se venga il suo plichese a tutti di venire a venire a hetto di venire a colisse montagnarda Pecchia il cielo che se gli sia lecce giù e giù per il nas Per supplicare a Dio il tutto può essere il Signore sentire Che è detto in via la stad Il vento vengono sì e le moaglie vengono giù e vengono stare con il pre Che ha messo in cielo da me essere parte in tamiz le svacche del scode e sorazione E il dato in la spagna, in la legge vengono e il sposo in rozzo e vengono neuti al pre Scarpa mi la rassa, la pastrella, non ne so enter Quei che il pre le giovani ne benedite, ma è sura, togli in te gli amano e tutti benedeo Il pre prende un moped con una maniocca che gira e c'è un chilo Pigiata d'alps e sforza tra la moaglia Che specchia di amare il paziente e svenesce il cieccio della sera Il genclo in air Cul ta calf sil fron stat sil pun en stalle cul es vaks se derg en de stalle ved en es fraken ad el es kommes de von. Hetz vengen gips i dom es jus kommes il chen klineren sil vadi. El ai buschicha kun gips schon lo vengen budes kapa. En cul es kommes en tiers el en gali jaus cul zu get vil es soif de vos stalle. Ave ves kapaus zu get cul porcelle ve vitire schicha el ad el es kapaus. Dil porcie stas nu et vetem. Gilt setzen. 
la notte. Oi, Clara, Clara. Le stoil es lige in gite, si nun già davon il claus, il spos, il pasce di irma. Spelt si nun già la bottiglia, il fazzandin, cava con si pala in fosse intorno al signun. El fecce la pala, la tiara, schmacca, col che cede colms la pala, alzò la tiara. Fecce la pala, giù la tiara, alzò. Tocan che la cavau intorno, intorno al signun, el cava vin avon, cava vin avon. Cava vin avon fazzandin, pia pi profonds, entro nel signun. Ecco. Thank you, um, Arno. Um, I think to start immediately with the fragment you have just read, um, could you tell us something more about, you say you, you write simultaneously in two languages? Or how does it work? No, it depends on the weather. If I write in German or in Romance, mostly if it is raining, I write in Romance. There's something called like a retromanic saudade, like the Portuguese, a kind of melancholy who is typical for the people who live in these areas. Uh, you cannot explain exactly what it is, but as a, to, to make it more plastic, I remember my grandfather Um, they were a group of people, always on Sunday, they lay down in, in the fields and they sang songs from uh, being away, not be able to come home, even if they never left. And uh, it's a kind of absur absurdity and uh, melancholy who, who is part of that. So raining means writing in romance. But I wrote the book first in German, the whole book. I rewrote the same book in Romance with the same uh, story uh, but uh, it's a different language you you, have, you need another access the words are in Romance shorter there are many diphthongs the words end often with a vocal so you wrote differently with sound and maybe the most absurd thing about that is it sounds really lively maybe but it's uh, it's a uh, vanishing there are always uh, less people speaking that. Um, <clears throat> this book is, uh, I see it's on the cover, Romanisch und Deutsch. So it is a bilingual edition? Yeah. Or, yeah. The first uh, original book is in two languages. And it reflects a bit, a bit this uh, linguistical situation there. It's an area where German and Romanisch are spoken. It's just the Alp where it takes place is on the... Uh, linguistic uh, border and it's interesting what happens there um, the, the the languages change words lend words to each other for example in Bern I live now close to Bern there's a word uh, you say they speak uh, Swiss German and they say klurti uh, klurti is, is a word for your how do you say you watch, watch. for your watch yeah. but comes from the French from Kelleur Etil. So it changes to Kleurti. Hesh is Kleurti. Do you have a Kleurti? Do you have a watch? So it's interesting what happens there between the languages. Mm -hmm. um, certainly in relation to the work of Ricardo, it, I, I can imagine that the idea that you write in a language that uh, not many people speak, uh, if you take the, the Romanish, uh, But that the, the characters also, in a way, it isolates, I can imagine, the characters. The fact that they are part of a community that speaks a language that is very uh, rare and that is even dying out, if I understand you correctly. And the people even die. Yeah. <laughs> the two. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yes, I always write about people. Uh, I'm interested how people act to each other, how they talk to each other. And in the end, it doesn't matter if you are there in the mountains or uh, in Brussels. The questions, in the end, are always the same ones. I'm looking in my texts for questions who, no, who are not related to a, a time or to an area. But uh, even, even there, people uh, um, have doubts. They uh, love each other, they hate each other, they, uh, that's my questions mm -hmm. I write about. And I, I like the idea that it's an Alp who's so big, 
but uh, it's like a claustrophobic element in here. The four characters, they are like uh, encaged every day with the same ones. This big L, but you are like, uh, yeah, what do you say? Mm -hmm. In a sort of secluded situation that uh, makes the tensions more intense. Yeah, they were interested in what, what parts of us does that takes out of us, this situation. Mm -hmm. Now, Ricardo, in your work, I think this seclusion is not that present. Maybe the opposite is true in the sense that the characters are part of or are heavily influenced by world historical events. So in the novel you read, takes place during during and after uh, Second World War. And the other novels available in Dutch are uh, concerning with, you could say, sort of mediatized terror uh, from uh, a serial killer in the one novel, but also from terrorist attacks uh, in the in the other novel. Um, is this? I can imagine this is a conscious decision to write about uh, people that are influenced by a sort of globalized uh, context. I don't know if globalized is the word, but uh, of course, uh, one of my worries is the relation between history mm -hmm. with capital and history with our histories no? how our histories are always determined or influenced at least by by by, by the fact that we live in, in a whole structure that becomes stronger and stronger and determines us no? is that that phrase of august comte that uh, everyone is 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 born in, a, in in an age and we can get out of this age. No? So this is one of my my most uh, important decision to in, in the order of writing. Mm -hmm. And um, you could say in relation to time that you that you can see a sort of evolution in the the what human life is about. I think that the character from La Ofensa is uh, living during the. Uh, Second World War, and there is, there are, you could say, historical differences uh, with the characters from from other novels because they live 50 years later, and some things have really changed, like terrorism and also the the way that media uh, takes an important part in this. Yeah, but at, at the end, I think, as as Arno says, that the the most important thing is that always survive. Uh, a common, a common plot, a common, a common sense of being in the world. No, so uh, the the times change. Uh, the human being is very plastic, mm -hmm. but at the end, uh, the few things that move us are the same. No? Maybe the, the time, uh, love, uh, death. So uh, probably. Uh, any any time has its own characters, but the the biggest questions remains the same, mm -hmm. and that's other interesting thing for me. No, uh, I came from philosophy. I studied philosophy, so I think philosophy is the most of the times uh, a big inquiry, a big mm -hmm. a big uh, a big issue about the this common things that uh, compromise all of us. Yeah. Um, Arno, do you think that the, 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 the stories you tell in this trilogy could have also taken place 100 years ago or uh, 100 years later? Is there a sort of... You, you Maybe this has to do with, uh, with, with the, the ideas you can have of Switzerland, but you can have the, the idea that, that there is a sort of timeless present in your novels that is not influenced by uh, history? I think in, in, in the deep, yes. Mm -hmm. But the point is, I live now. And if I write, I look always to be close, close to a possible life. Yeah, If I write this book here, I, I know this one from my um, childhood. Mm -hmm. in, I know how it feels like. And um, but maybe um, may may we just tell the whole life one uh, on the, the same story just uh, um, in another way and uh, may we have uh, just uh, one big theme for our writing. I've the idea after seven books now there's always uh, 
the end as a phenomenon is something which attracts me so strongly. For example, the last book, um, The Last, mm -hmm. uh, from the trilogy, it's called The Last, is last evening even in a kind of a village bar be before the, the bar closes forever. And it just uh, what people, it's like uh, the end. Mm -hmm. They put the stories against the end. It's, it's a book about death. And uh, it's just, uh, I cannot explain that, but mm -hmm. it attracts me so much. Is it also, uh, was it also an end in your writing career? I mean, I don't know the other books I you have written. I rewrite but the different? end uh, on and on. I always rewrite the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now the, the next one is about love and, and death too. So, and the next one too, it's, it's about, I'm just looking, um, I don't, not looking for, but it, it falls me, uh, falls to me that I just find the moment so mm -hmm. and is switzerland in all your books the the, the i don't the care about no? switzerland i don't care about switzerland if i would uh, have grown up in italy my books would take place in italy and in, if in france uh, it would place there just about for me it's important to be close to the things i write to to f to know how it feels like I, i don't care about uh, where the border goes through Mm -hmm. And in, you, in the end, I'm just interested in, in people. Okay. Yes. Who are but, you? Who is mm -hmm. he? Who is he? Uh, but I don't want to sound as like someone with nationalist beliefs or something. But you can imagine there is an, a strong influence from the fact that you were born in in a country that is geographically uh, somewhat isolated because of simply because of the, all the mountains and the, also historically it it is somewhat the odd one out in the European uh, mm -hmm. uh, context. I think what influences me lots, I grew up in a, in a village with 50 people. Mm -hmm. Not only 50, not 50,000, 50. But we were, had uh, someone, uh, the neighbors uh, skyward spoke Italian. The ones next door, German, we spoke Romain. Um, the mother of a friend spoke French. There were someone speaking Portuguese, there were languages from the Balkan. I think this is a point of influence me, mm. to be in this polyphony. And if, if I write now in German, I take a word from the French, from Italian. It's like uh, playing an orc. How do you say? In the church, you have the big instrument. Mm -hmm. the, yes, the large I, I, organ, the large organ, organ, yes. Indeed. With different registers and uh, many pipes. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So there is, you mean there is even in this small village a very large diversity of people and voices and languages? That's how I grew up mm. and uh, that's what interests me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Ricardo, is uh, the three books that we have available in Dutch, are they, uh, in, uh, I think somewhere is written on the, 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 the text on the cover that it is intended as a trilogy, is that true or? But uh, I think this this was a, a commercial okay. <laughs> <laughs> because the when you say uh, Ricardo Mendes has, Salmon has uh, write the trilogy of evil, mm. this sounds uh, strong. So no, this sounds interesting. Uh, yes. But uh, is, yes, <laughs> it's mentioned that way. But yeah. uh, of course, uh, this idea is, is, is born in Spain. With my editor says, okay, three years in consecutive years, three years in the same publishing house, three 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 books. Excuse me, in consecutive years, three books in in the same publishing house, three books that it's possible to to keep together because this 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 thema of this 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 item this problematic of the evil okay let's try to mm. to sell to the audience as the trilogy of evil instead of la ofensa uh, the rumbe uh, and el corrector in fact what i'm trying to say is that uh, all my books are at the end the same book mm -hmm. So, uh, before I, I published these books in, in Seix Barral, that is my publishing house in Spain, it's a very important publishing house, I have written some books for little publishing houses. And when Seix Barral uh, published in the, in, in the consecutive years, 
these these old books, these ancient books. Uh, in fact, they will have to say that it's not the trilogy of Evil, but the I, I don't know the word, the quadrilogy, or the <laughs> you know. So uh, the important thing for me is that um, I'm interested in uh, construct a work, a whole work, not books. Uh, what 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 is important to me and what I love the writers that I love, uh, I al always uh, find in in them this idea of a work through the through the time. You know? So, uh, in fact, I, I I used to say that I always write the same book with uh, different clothes. You know. Mm -hmm. the what was striking in the the, the, the fragment you read from uh, La Ofensa is that the in a way the almost essayistic character of this passage, which is I think present in uh, the three novels sometimes, in which there is a narrator. I think it's only in the the corrector in which we have a first person first, narrator. Yeah. The others are uh, sort of omniscient narrator, um, but there is always this reflexive somewhat cultural critical sometimes uh, yes, idea I'm, of I'm looking at what is taking place. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm very interested in this kind of narrator who who became sometimes a fiction narrator but other times became a sagist or memorialist or even the the author Ricardo Menendez Salmon is inside the, the novel. No? Uh, maybe because my background as I say, I, I I don't came from the from the literature, or I came from philosophy, and I, I love writers who 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 invite to think in the novels, but uh, also through the voice, through the narrative voice. No? I have to say, I I don't know a lot about contemporary Spanish literature, but I did read a lot of uh, uh, the books of uh, Javier Marias, which. There is a, maybe a similarity in his writings in the sense that there's always this, in his case, I think mostly a first person narrator, sort of endlessly thinking about what is happening uh, and analyzing it and maybe sometimes over interpreting uh, very personal, uh, often in his case, very personal things. Maybe one of the differences with Marias is that the things your narrators think about are really. Uh, well, you could say much more important than the sometimes trivial and comic things that, uh, that Marias is concerned with. I, I don't know if I can speak about Marias here. Yeah, he's not here, I think. <laughs> he's not here. <laughs> he's the, I don't know the term for Baca Sagrada in English. I don't know how can we say Baca Sagrada. Uh, you so know, the, 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 the he's a marble, no? He's a marble. It's like Goethe. It's like, okay. it's our Goethe, our Thomas Mann, our. Mm. Are Harry Mulish, no? yeah. So <laughs> we can't say uh, no. Uh, it, but it's interesting what you say in in a sense. Uh, I I've never felt um, close to the Spanish tradition in literature, at least in 20th century. Uh, my my brothers of uh, came from 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 other parts of the world, from other from other from other literatures. Uh, for instance, I, very, I think I'm very influenced by the German literature in the in the 20th century. I mean, uh, names like Broch or Musil or or Kafka or even um, th this kind of of writers, and, and also. Uh, Mm, the excess existentialist, um, maybe writers like Céline, or, or even more philosophical like Camus, or, or even Sartre. So I, I have a difficult relation with my, no, with I, with my. I understand. I understand. Yes, with my. There's also I don't know which novel it is. Don DeLillo is mentioned. I yes. think that's sort of. Yes. I, again, this cultural criticism or this interpreting. Yes, for me, DeLillo is maybe. It's. it's, it's it's not easy to say to say this, but for me, it's the the most important living writer in the world. Mm. For me, uh, mm. of course, this is a personal point of view. But what I mean, I think the Lilo is the the reader of the reality. Mm -hmm. It's it's the man who is putting his eye in the right place. Yeah. 
uh, during this 20 or 30 last years. For me, it's a monster. It's a, He's a marvel, not Marius. Okay. Uh, Arno, do you have the idea you are part of a, a, a literary tradition or um, no. not? No. <laughs> no, I, I may be more uh, influenced by, by the film, by the movie. I really, really love Almodovar or uh, Charismaki or Jarmusch or Godard, Jean-Luc Godard. Uh, so uh, the way I write, I think, is uh, is quite filmic. Mm -hmm. I have like scenes in my head. I translate these ones into language. I try to simplify as much as I can that the pictures are, are so clear as possible in the end, that you have your movie in your head. And um, even I, I don't comment, I just... Uh, pose questions. The only form of command is the the what chapter comes after each one. There's maybe a situation in the second one the father shows the dog then and then cut dark and the next chapter is it uh, was snowing. Everything is uh, under snow now. It's like a form of command but uh, not saying if it is bad or not. That's you doing that. It's, it's never about the, the author. It's, it's always you finishing the book with your background. And I don't want to say to you how do you have to read that. Mm -hmm. um, what is, I think in, it's in the Cezner, the first uh, part of the trilogy. Um, maybe first this question, in your case, is it much more intended really as a trilogy or is this also something that a publisher thought of as a good idea? Um, I saw I saw a few few weeks ago the movie about uh, Nick Cave, uh, the, my twenty thousand day on Earth, mm -hmm. and he just says something nice. Uh, now you are like in a chaos, and you just write your history or you invent your history. Um, so you try with your songs, with your art, to do your history. What I want to say. Yeah, if I think now it was intended from beginning to be a trilogy, but at the moment maybe I wrote the first, therefore there's one more and uh, I could write a third one. I don't know, how how did was it for you? Yeah. How does it become the trilogy for you? No, no, no I, I, <laughs> I, I insist in no, no, what I say. I, I, I'm, in other words, I'm not able to conceive three books at the same time, for instance. I, I, can't, I can't think in what I'm going to do five years ago, or five years in the future. So when I, when I write a book, I'm absolutely devoured by, 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 by this work. So I, I, can't, I can't look outside, I can't watch outside the, the book. It's interesting that the, the, um, the Crow from Edgar Allan Poe, he wrote a text describing how he he proceeded to write the poem. And I thought reading that it's not, maybe, maybe he yes, but uh, writing that after having written the poem is maybe easier to yeah. than doing it before. <laughs> Is there, uh, we talked with Ricardo about the sort of essayistic reflection on, uh, on events taking place. I think in, in your books, you, you seem to concentrate more on just describing as precisely as possible simply what is taking place rather than thinking about what it means or what it could be. I think the someone in, in a review called it the sort of uh, in, in uh, Dutch newspaper called it the sort of vignettes you have sort of a collection of scenes that you describe as, as uh, precisely as possible and then you go on to the next scene but the the, the idea that you that, that the narrator or you as a writer should comment on these uh, vignettes is not is not in the in the book I think, compared to Ricardo. I just, yeah, just write a story. So yes. I just, it's, it's an interesting question you said, where is the author in the text? Mm -hmm. Where is your position? So uh, 
regarding season here there are four characters but the fifth one that's me looking at the scene and um, so where are you staying looking at what happens here there's one scene there's the the chief is over there saying something looking down and down there are the other two ones looking up so he's standing in the middle this way mm -hmm. so how do you um, the orientierung im Raum, I don't know how to say in English. No. Okay. So the, the orientation way, yes. in, in the room. How things are positioned in space and uh, how they, uh, yeah. sort of visual presentation of, of what takes place. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, um, strange question maybe, but do you think the life of your characters is, is boring? <laughs> no, not at all. That's all lives. <laughs> so you think all th they are similar to to the lives of many people? Yeah. What the, what are we doing in in life? Uh, another question is what are we dreaming about? Or coming to a certain point, what wished we to become? What are we? Where are we going to? Mm -hmm. It helps us to uh, have a nice life, to have all the wishes and uh, desires. So my characters do carry that with them, as we all, I mean, maybe, or no, as I do. It's also in comparison with uh, Ricardo's characters, like the, the, the soldier from La Offensa. Well, you, you can say many things about him, but he did not have a boring life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, def def define what, what's bo what means bore to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could say that uh, a boring life is something that is not uh, something that that is not interesting to write about, but uh, <laughs> maybe you would disagree. Yes. I think you can, I, you can think I, that. I disagree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I disagree. But I, I understand what you mm -hmm. what you asking us, but uh, but uh, I'm I'm agree with with Arno. Okay. Uh, uh, it's probably I I never write a book about the people who is in 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 the novels by by Arno, but. Uh, that doesn't mean that this, these lives are uh, boring or, mm. or it's, it's, uh, I think that's, that's not the word in no. this case. <laughs> but they are, I don't know, maybe that's different in, in other novels you've written, but they are present at, they are w at least witnesses of, uh, of important uh, events or they take place in, in something that is not Every day, or not something that that all of us. Yes, but maybe because I, I focus. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's just a focus. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean that uh, of course these people. In fact, for instance, in in the Shenden, mm -hmm. uh, one of the ideas of the novel is that maybe uh, Kurt, this man who mm -hmm. lives this disaster, would wish to have a, a boring life, a normal life, uh, a working life. Uh, a, a little life. Mm -hmm. but they use the, the word "little" in 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 a, in a, in a good sense, no? mm -hmm. because at the end, I think all all our lives are little lives. Mm -hmm. no? if, if we compare the scale of what happened and we live, uh, what we live, it's it's always. Uh, and and uh, I think the great literature of all times is made by little lives. Mm -hmm. For example, in Switzerland, the uh, um, discussion, maybe um, uh, sometimes people ask me, why do your books uh, play in the province and not in the big city? And uh, so the, the fear to be provincial, and I always think provincial is the one who are afraid to be provincial. This one is provincial. Mm. So uh, there's not a, a better life here or there. Every life is... Has a to the to the <laughs> very beautiful sound of that language. It's, it's really shocked me. It has a, a a music very. But I, I remind the books of Hatta Miller in some in some, in some aspects. No, this and, and what you say now that the sequences. When when I was listening to you, I, I remind these little uh, lives of of also of Hatta Miller, but became. Uh, a mirror of happened what happened in, in in Europe, for instance, in the 20th century. You no, know? mm -hmm. focusing on uh, 
a, a small portion uh, uh, on a place that is never on the newspapers or is never in the television, but uh, it's as important as New York City or Madrid or Berlin or, or Brussels. Mm -hmm. So there is not necessarily, uh, or this can show that, that both of your books sort of meet, or your approaches meet, in the sense that you you try to uh, focus on characters that are very specific, but because they are specific, they also have something universal about them. Yes. Of course, mm. uh, because that's literature about uh, at the end. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe to end uh, also on a time-related question uh, that is the future. Um, what are your writing plans for the uh, future or what do you have, are you working on at the moment, uh, Ricardo? Uh, I just came from Germany where I, I have lived one year in, in Bavaria in a small place called Bamberg uh, during 11 months. And so, so you lived abroad in Germany for, for almost yes, a I year? Yes, I received a um, stipendium okay. and a bursary studio for an institution called Villa Concordia. And I was able to, to work in a splendid conditions, conditions that I never find in Spain, of course, <laughs> because uh, in this case, uh, Spain is different, <laughs> also in this case. So uh, I write a lot. I write like a, like a dog. <laughs> I don't know if it's a, a good expression, but I finished uh, my eleventh novel. That it's called El Sistema, the system, the system, and will be appeared in the next year in Spain. And maybe could say that it's a political novel. It's it's my second uh, proof to to write a political novel after the corrector, but not in the same uh, sense of the corrector. It was a novel very focused on, as you say, the the terrorist attack in in Madrid in 2004. In this case, it's a kind of utopia on, on Ukraine, and so it's a kind of. I don't know. I don't know the word. Maybe a, a new negative utopia. Mm. But uh, concerning what has happened, uh, at least in Europe, in these uh, years, because I think we are all involved. At least in Spain, we we suffer this in in a very complex way of thinking, of relating, and. And of course, very influenced by the economical problems that we suffer in the next, in the last years. So I think this will be represented in the in the novel, but in a very diffuse way, no? not as obvious as in the novel as the correct. Okay. Well, let's hope that uh, it will be available in Dutch uh, soon uh, too. Uh, Arno, do you have uh, finished the book, or have you just started a new one? I'm just, uh, I don't know exactly where I am. Uh, the flip, maybe the, the thing I can tell you is that uh, I just go on writing 100 pages novels. My novels has always 100 pages. It's like, uh, yeah, my distance. You mean that when you have written 100 pages, you feel you are no, ready? No, I just think like that's, uh, I try to get over there. No, I I'm just trying to say, we say, or I say, I never talk about the novel. Be no, that's true. Maybe it's even, bad even luck. before, it's bad luck. the only one who reads my text until the text is published is my editor, who is my lector, too. He and me, we're the only ones who know the text before the text will be published. It's just, uh, I don't know why. I feel better not to tell no, anyone something. I understand. But um, it's in a way a pity, but of course we still have these here in Dutch, these three books. I think they are, uh, all six of them are available uh, outside and uh, we didn't discuss it, but I think if people would like to, you, you also can 
autograph and even talk with the authors a little bit. So uh, thank you very much, Ricardo Menendez-Salmon and uh, Arno Kamenich. Thank you.